Hello, everyone. I am Mariette Westermann, the Vice Chancellor of NYU Abu Dhabi and a Professor of Arts and Humanities at our university. Welcome to the NYU Abu Dhabi and the Art of Change panel. This is one in a series of talks that are celebrating the 10th anniversary of NYU AD. And in these conversations, these virtual conversations, really, we talk with distinguished experts in and outside the university to reflect on the milestones that we've achieved since NYU AD's founding, milestones for the university, but also for the country. We explore perspectives from, the, from thought leaders uh, from around the world, inside our university and outside our university, on the impact that we've had on the world of the disciplines and also on society here in Abu Dhabi, the UAE, and around the globe. So in this panel today, we will talk about the rapid growth and dynamism of the arts and the creative industries in the UAE over the past decade, and the role that MWA Abu Dhabi, with its partner institutions, has played in those developments. And because we are in a very special year, as we know, we will also talk about the changes that the pandemic forced upon the arts in the UAE and well beyond. And I'm just so grateful that with me here are four truly driving forces in the transformation of the cultural sector in the UAE and in Abu Dhabi over the past 10 years or more, frankly. Let me very briefly introduce them before we get going. Uh, with us here is Her Excellency Nora al Kabi, the Minister of Culture and Youth of the UAE. She has played such an important role uh, in the country, multiple roles over well over a decade here, uh, including serving as CEO and chair of 2454 for quite some time, the critical media uh, and entertainment production company that has uh, really done so much to enliven the cultural scene uh, and make the entire country better informed, in fact, uh, over the past uh, decade. Uh, also here with us is Manuel Rabaté. He is the well-known director of the Louvre Abu Dhabi and indeed was one of its founding leaders over time, having also come from the Louvre, in fact. He came here uh, permanently in 2016 after a very successful career of cultural leadership in France, where, among other things, he helped create the Musée du Quai Branly, which is without a doubt uh, the most important new anthropological museum uh, built in the 21st century. And then from within Envoy Abu Dhabi itself, we have Maya Allison. She is the founding executive director of the NYUAD Art Gallery that's been going with us now since 2014. And she is also uh, the curator, uh, looking forward, of the UAE National Pavilion for the Venice Biennale next year in 2022. And she brought this kind of experience that uh, she brings to bear really from her work as a curator in university settings in Rhode Island, both at Brown and at the Rose Rhode Island School of Design. And uh, also then uh, rounding out our beautiful quintet here uh, is Bill Bregan. Uh, the founding executive and artistic director of the Art Center at NYUAD. Um, he came to us from New York with an incredible career in public artistic programming uh, at New York uh, at New York's uh, Lincoln Center, where he was director of all public programming, and he played a very similar role at uh, the public theater in New York as well. And really, I'm just an art historian, so I'm actually in awe of all the uh, work that these cultural leaders and entities that have they have created and led in the arts over time. Thank you all for being with us. I am now going to start us off by asking each of them a particular question, and then we'll take it from there. Let me start with uh, Her Excellency. So please, Nora, could you talk a little bit for us about what have been the most significant changes in the arts ecosystem in the UAE that you have witnessed in the past decade? And then look forward a little to what sorts of change you would like to work for with the Ministry of Culture and Youth over the next 10 years. 
Thank you, Mayor. First of all, I have to say that I'm so happy to be here with you all. Um, and my heartfelt congratulations uh, to NYU Abu Dhabi for competing a decade in Abu Dhabi. It is indeed a very, very special occasion. Uh, uh, we are all proud of the, of the immense services that the university has rendered, uh, not just to the country, but to the region as well. So I'm very thankful to you and each member uh, of your team. Uh, you've been uh, inspiring us and raising cultural uh, and, and adding value um, to, uh, to this country and, and beyond. And first and foremost, uh, with regards to the, to the past 10 years, uh, let me start by saying, uh, wow, it's sensational. Uh, I mean, those of us who are very fortunate to have been working in a sphere that was such a dynamic uh, and we've changed it across the arts and, and cultural sphere in the UAE. Uh, every part of this past decade has been significant, uh, whereby um, uh, an environment uh, conducive to promoting creativity um, uh, and, uh, and fostering uh, talents that exist here today, which is really crucial and important for us. Uh, and it's, it is what, if we talk about the significant change, um, I mean, let's start by number one, the dialogue. Um, and, and this is what's happening uh, now. I mean, our openness to, to build bridges, uh, a value across culture heritage and invite those like-minded uh, individuals uh, to join us in the journey. Uh, secondly, as well, the creative um, infrastructure, um, generating uh, a critical mass um, uh, to develop uh, policies, legislation, uh, and led to the creation of soft and hard infrastructure uh, that are the backbone of the arts uh, and cultural ecosystem uh, that we're witnessing today. Uh, number three, which is the heart and core of NYU Abu Dhabi is uh, academia. Uh, I mean, the backbone of change uh, uh, where, where such institutions uh, like you, you're fostering growth, uh, creativity, uh, competitiveness, um, allowing uh, for an environment where, where talent is exposed to global uh, practice throughout the journey. Uh, our creative institutions um, have been essential in being also a catalyst in the change of the art scene. Um, I think these three things that I've mentioned uh, have facilitated um, an international collaboration. Uh, the creation of galleries uh, and the exposure of a variety of artistic talents uh, across all mediums. Uh, finally, uh, we cannot not mention COVID-19. Uh, it, it, it had played, it, it is playing a crucial role in implementing the change in our ecosystem, uh, being a force and a pivot of the digital format. And I think uh, uh, Maya and Bill and, 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 and Manuel were all uh, into, you know, we, we're, we got to mention this digital platform and how we can enable the experience and bring culture to the homes uh, and, you know, provide and support such exposure, uh, such uh, exceptional, uh, exponential growth and exposure to the art scene. Um, it, it was, the pandemic is a catalyst uh, that um, helped us in innovating. And at the ministry, it forced us to up our game. Uh, uh, it taught us resilient uh, and how to safeguard the jobs in the creative sector in the UAE. Um, finally, let me say that it also allowed uh, us to think clearly for the next 10 years. Yesterday, the leadership celebrated the next 50 years. We're, 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 we're celebrating the UAE Jubilee soon and having NYU Abu Dhabi as part of this is so crucial and important for us. Um, we want to be uh, you know, the, the leader in creating the right research, legal framework that generates creative economy and further innovation that is not just restricted uh, and allows uh, for global talent both in traditional medium and also in digital uh, platforms. Uh, we hear the noise of the NFTs and we want to be part of it uh, and also to realize uh, that the UAE uh, is home for everyone. Thank you so much for uh, setting us off in this way. And I'm, I'm wondering, uh, Nora, if I might ask you, you have here with you the three leaders of great arts entities what more would you like them to do? The art gallery, the museum uh, of the Louvre, and of course the art center, as we look ahead to the next 10 years, and in fact, the next half century that you've just referenced. You can ask us anything. Thank you. Th thank you for that. I mean, what's wonderful, I, do, I don't have to ask because each one of them is just wonderful of, of what they're offering and how they're 
they have this kind of common vision in terms of and collaborating and working together and helping one another, we can do more. But let me list um, what I am so proud of. Uh, and it's really helping us uh, with regards to the culture and creatives here in the UAE. And uh, NYU Abu Dhabi, you're having the Arab uh, Center for the study headed by uh, Selwa Maqdadi, Professor Selwa Maqdadi. This is, ju- this is just something that is very much uh, in core in terms of what we're trying to do. Um, you know, uh, Bill uh, Bragan, I-, I miss coming to the theater and I can't wait to come soon. I mean, uh, what he's doing in the art center and what he's offering the sun- art center is se- certainly elevating the scene. Um, and I have to say, uh, what what has been done in the art center wasn't just very kind of a, a um, let's say a, a community based. No, it was international. It got a certain crowd who appreciate the genres and trained uh, individuals who work in the ministry at the theater who are capable of carrying the theater across the UAE. Uh, Maya, uh, uh, of course, our future curator of the Benali, we're very proud uh, of winning the the Golden uh, Lion this year. And we look forward to having Maya uh, in the next year for the the art version. Um, And and, and I have to say, uh, the Golden Lion is connected with NYU Abu Dhabi, uh, with the support of the Amber Research Lab. Uh, so this has been wonderful. And what we're doing in the Arabic language, uh, you have Nizar Habash, who's working in Camel Lab, and the linguistic kind of lab, who is also part of our uh, uh, committee. Uh, and Manuel has been uh, always, I've been always uh, nagging Manuel uh, on text and WhatsApp, and he's been very helpful. Um, and again, this common vision that we have, uh, Marriott, each one of uh, uh, the guests here and you yourself, um, I think what we do together, it, it will help us um, in the future to achieve uh, uh, better outcomes and what we dream of. Inshallah, I think it is what we all want indeed. Let me turn to Manuel. Um, you and I have talked about this in the past Since we're talking today about Emu Abu Dhabi and the art of change, I've been reflecting on the reality that change in the arts is not just something that the Louvre Abu Dhabi and Emu Abu Dhabi and other institutions from outside the country are bringing to the UAE. It's not a passive reception process on this end. And working in Abu Dhabi also changes the institutions that we came from, our home institutions in Paris and New York. How do you see that interaction between the mission of the Louvre Abu Dhabi here and how the Louvre in France and museums outside this country are involved, are evolving? Um, thank you so much, Mariette. Um, f- first of all, I would like just to echo uh, uh, what uh, Excellency uh, Nora Kabi just said. Uh, Nora, your words were beautiful. And yeah, indeed, we're so proud of, of NYUAD and and. Uh, in French, I would say, bon anniversaire, happy birthday to to, uh, to your great institutions and, and, and to the team mobilizer. And I'm, I'm very pleased to be uh, an honor to be with you uh, uh, today. Um, it's interesting indeed, because uh, I don't know if everybody know, in, in, in the UAE and Abu Dhabi, it's obvious that uh, we are both on, on side yet, but... Uh, 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 when, when, uh, when uh, Excellency Nora mentioned this ecosystem, we actually uh, indeed uh, share uh, the same territory, and we are on the same island. So we are friends and neighbors, neighbors and friends, as as uh, as this uh, very um, uh, growing and, and exciting and dynamic uh, um, uh, cultural ecosystem. What is very interesting for um, uh, New York University Abu Dhabi and Louvre Abu Dhabi is that we have this sort of same DNA. Uh, I mean, it's obvious from our mission, but it's also even more obvious from our names. The fact that we are the meeting point between the capital city of uh, uh, on the uh, on, on, on the Emirate of Abu Dhabi and and uh, uh, a global uh, uh, leader of uh, of uh, academia or, or the museum world on this meeting point, and I'm. I'm I'm always telling it, you're not NYU, you're NYU Abu Dhabi. And we are not the Louvre, even if we shorten it sometimes, we're Louvre Abu Dhabi. And this meeting point, which is really, I would say, um, uh, our DNA and the specificity to be completely local, to be here, but to be relevant and reaching out to the world. So um, 
I think the interaction always between us and uh, and the other institution giving our names is um, win-win. We're getting uh, the access and we are providing this access to uh, uh, talented people uh, in the UAE, Emirati, or living in the UAE, in this mix. And similarly, we are opening a door for people in New York or in Paris for them to understand uh, uh, the Arab world, uh, the UAE, and, and, and I would say uh, uh, a decentralized world. And this is in, in this uh, uh, global and complex. And again, uh, thanks, uh, Nora, for, for mentioning the challenges that we can have with COVID-19. In this very um, complex and difficult world, this interaction, this positive and constructive interaction are absolutely, I think, the key to have uh, a mature development uh, uh, for humanity in the, in the future. Well, I certainly second uh those sentiments and they're very aligned certainly with our mission. And I also deeply value our multifaceted partnership with the Louvre Abu Dhabi, which goes back to even before the opening of our uh, respective institutions. What do you think our collaborations mean for the Louvre Abu Dhabi and how can the broader arts and museum community benefit from what we can do together? Again, I would say that um, sharing the same DNA, it's <laughs> quite obvious that um, uh, we have uh, many, many, many uh, uh, ways and, and, and uh, encounters and interaction and positive ones. We have the same um, objective that would, is, is a transformative. And, and uh, this, uh, this talk today is, is about the, the art of change. Uh, so we, we're using uh, art to, uh, um, to promote change and, and, and transformation. We both are um, an educative uh, tool educate you're in the academia we, we are we are giving access to knowledge and to uh, and to artworks and we um, uh, we all do that uh, uh, with our own uh, methodology but with a very strong uh, attachment to excellence and to accessibility and to inclusivity so uh, it's obvious uh, I'm a little long on the, on the values but it's important to know that we, we really share this uh, um, uh, very um, uh, constructive methodology. I, I was trying, uh, <laughs> anticipating our talk, and because we are working on an MOU that should be signed one day, but uh, we didn't need to sign the MOU to, to work uh, <laughs> on many, many, many facets. And I was trying just to recap, and I, I, maybe I will uh, I will miss a few. Uh, there are so many. Actually, there are um, things uh, that would be uh, in the realm of, of Bill uh, on the cultural programs. Um, I, I discovered uh, on, on the fact that we loved going to <laughs> see your shows. Uh, um, we, um, I, I even discovered that the, the students of, of uh, NYU AD have, have, have helped us testing uh, the incredible "We Are Not Alone," uh, "We Are Not Alone" the, with Sunwalk uh, Collective uh, uh, just before the, the, the pandemic, and, and, and that it was a great uh, uh, experimentation of what a narrativity can be in a, in a public space with your with your team, with your uh, expertise, uh, with your students. Um, we had uh, uh, in, in uh, to, to celebrate aid uh, this year, uh, uh, calligraphy, uh, digital projection. Uh, on the wall and, and uh, on the tip that we got on a, following a discussion with Bill and and, uh, and with uh, with the team of uh, of NYU AD and, and that was an uh, incredible uh, collaboration and, and we are going to uh, uh, to host and to welcome uh, uh, the the rooftop, rooftop resim uh, in LAD uh, uh, in November so we are, we're, we're, every every project is is a, a new way to 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 work together. Um, on, on the more uh, the other side of the cycle, that would be the more uh, serious on the research, uh, uh, deep uh, research. Uh, our teams have been working uh, with a Getty uh, project, uh, the Appear uh, project, and and uh, uh, both our teams have worked on on our Fayum portrait, so this uh, Romano Egyptian. Uh, a funerary portrait that has been scanned, analyzed with your tools, with our artworks, with both teams working together. That's, that's, I mean, that's real science. That's real museum science. And we have done that together. 
um, the, uh, I'm, we are very excited in the future to work with Salwa McDaddy and with the new center. Uh, Her Excellency Nora just mentioned we, we want to be part of this experience also. This is uh, something which is also uh, in our DNA and, and, uh, and we're very uh, pleased for, 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 for Salwa and for NYUAD, uh, NYUAD to, to launch it. And uh, we have been uh, contributing uh, as Louvre Abu to many uh, conferences. Uh, uh, Robert Kilroy, uh, Guilhem André, on Estelle Gaville, have done, either organized by you or through you or with us. We have done plenty of things. And I would like to finish by quoting, uh, referencing um, maybe my favorite because I was uh, heavily involved personally with you, Mariette, and that was source of, of the pleasure, which was our common symposium that we've done in, uh, in November uh, 2020. Um, which again, and I would uh, again uh, go back to what uh, Nora said on, on the COVID and the um, how it put forces us to to invent new models. We have done uh, an incredible uh, reflection on the um, uh, reframing the museum using um, uh, this tool, the, the Zoom uh, tool, in order to bring people from all over the world. So in Abu Dhabi. While being dematerialized, it was definitely the mix of what Abu Dhabi can propose to the world with both our institution that allowed us, allowed us to question uh, uh, the, the evolution of the museum world. And that's, we made it together. And I'm, I'm very proud. And, and uh, it's not the last one, but <laughs> this is a very important okay. example of collaboration. So we will sign the MOU. Uh, one day, uh, uh, but MOU is an intention trans uh, translated into legal terms. The fact that we are doing it is uh, 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 more significant uh, uh, for us. And, and, uh, and again, we're very pleased to be part of, uh, of this adventure. Thank you. Manuel, the pride and joy and gratitude is all ours, I would say. We reciprocated very much. You've given a wonderful range of these collaborations that exist between cultural institutions, museums, and universities. And I like to think of museums as the other great educational institutions and research institutions, quite apart from their public function. And I'm very grateful, uh, Nora, that you have also emphasized this, this interdisciplinary range. Of course, we have our great arts entities here with us in this conversation, but indeed we have computational linguists working on this, editors of the Library of Arabic Literature, like Philip Kennedy, and then these magnificent scientific collaborations using what are NYU's fantastic core technology and science laboratory platforms to examine uh, processes of making art and the deterioration of art and conservation of art right there at the Louvre Abu Dhabi. And we can do it because there's this density and concentration of talent uh, that has been attracted to Abu Dhabi and the UAE through all these initiatives. And I think we're really after 10 years beginning to seal the, this vision that the Emirates had uh, come to, to fruition, which is very exciting. And that brings me really to you, Maya. Maya, you and I are both residents of Sadiat Island where the Louvre Abu Dhabi and other museums and NYU all uh, sit together. And it is really, I think, remarkable for us to have a world-class museum like the Louvre Abu Dhabi and the other ones that are coming, the Guggenheim, the Zayed National Museum, and so forth, to have them only a few minutes drive from our campus. I have never had such a luxury. And it is also remarkable at the same time, I think, Manuel has spoken to it, for there to be a world-class university art gallery so near that museum and these others that are rising. So you are in a great position, I think, to help us understand the special role of a university art gallery and particularly that of the gallery you lead, the Emu Abu Dhabi Art Gallery, and then the role that that has that's a little different maybe from a great big nationally oriented museum or national museum like the Louvre World Museum. Uh, what is the role of the gallery, a university art gallery in the UAE uh, arts community? Uh, thank you very much. And I also want to echo the comments that are echoing around already, which is that it's such a pleasure to be sharing this screen and this space. I look forward to when we can gather in person again. Um, each face on the screen represents somebody that uh, has helped grow the vision of what we're doing at NYU Abu Dhabi and specifically helped me form the vision of what I'm doing at the gallery as, as we grow the gallery. Um, the gallery formed um, 
in, in, in a manner that is similar to university galleries in North America and, uh, and England and other parts of the world, but it's a still a very rare model, which is to use exhibition making, um, and exhibition viewing and study of art, direct experience of art as a core part of the learning experience for a student, but also how we, um, how we understand, uh, the questions that we're asking about humanity, right? So the questions that when you go into university, uh, whether as a student or as a faculty or researcher, uh, the core of what you're doing centers on investigation and learning, um, whether that's through experimentation, research, uh, and other forms of study, but also creating and thinking, developing new ideas and new interpretations. And all of these are the activities that happen in an exhibition process, of course. So a university gallery sort of centralizes that activity through the act of creating an exhibition in dialogue with faculty, with students, all working together behind the scenes. But then when we open to the public, that creates a space where the, the learning process, the thinking and the experimentation and the investigation of the artist, of the curator, of the scholars, all of that then opens into dialogue with our public community. So the public community and the university community together, through this kind of active informal dialogue, learn both about our views and about the work, but also about the community around us. Um, so in many ways, a university gallery opens a portal or a door between the internal university community and the one around us, but also reflects back where we are to the, to the new arrivals, the people who come to the UAE to join our university in whatever form. The gallery becomes one of the first points of contact with what the UAE is. And so we play a connecting role, sort of a connective tissue between academia and uh, the community around us. Now, having the Louvre Abu Dhabi close by creates this incredible opportunity because then it means in many ways, we're free to focus on the experimentation and the uh, sort of curatorial and artistic um, exploration that we wouldn't want to be doing naturally. And the university can also benefit from the incredible collection and exhibitions at the Louvre Abu Dhabi. And so the study of art, the direct study of art is possible because of the Louvre Abu Dhabi. And then the gallery, which has many different layers to it, can then sort of play off the ideas of what's happening in these exhibitions in these major museums next to us. So we have, we provide a, um, a third position. So there's the main uh, sort of museum model, there's the commercial galleries that sell art. And then within the university, we're in dialogue with both worlds. Uh, we have a space we call the project space where emerging artists and faculty can experiment and sort of have permission to fail, to try new exhibition ideas. And then the main gallery where we do uh, more ambitious uh, museum exhibitions. Um, but again, always sort of trying to test boundaries and experiment with new hypotheses of, um, of our artists and our curators. So that's a longish version of the short answer. Um, but I often compare us to uh, what a teaching hospital would do for a medical school. We're the place where we practice what we preach. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Well, and the wonderful thing is you don't do too much preaching while you're at it. You really are <laughs> connecting and oh, serving more as a portal. I love the word dialogue that's come up already in our own conversation here today. And uh, you mentioned, Maya, connective tissue and the, the gallery really being that connector between the world of artists in the UAE and well beyond, kind of coming here and back to the country, the community, and also university, There's these interesting triangulations you were describing. You yourself are, I think, an incredible connector for the Enwe Abu Dhabi community, uh, especially those of us who came from out other countries into this place, uh, and you do it through the arts. And of course, that very uh, uh, quality that you've brought working with artists and really helping us see the art that already is here and the history of artists in the UAE, where you've been part of a, a real movement of uncovering some past histories uh, of artists and bringing them forward into the present and future. That is what's made you into the curator of the UAE National Pavilion for the Biennale. And I just want to give you one minute 
to give us a little preview of what you will bring uh, with uh, the artists you are working with there uh, next year. Absolutely. Although I can't give much away at this point. What I will say is that this exhibition uh, brings to light both the history of um, an incredibly active art community that's been here for decades and decades. And this artist is one who's been practicing um, since the 1980s. So in the way you would think you're going to see a historical exhibition, but in fact, there will be work you've never seen before. And uh, I know Nora is probably, Her Excellency Nora is wondering what that's going to be. We're going to surprise everybody. But um, one of the biggest surprises for most people who are not from the UAE is to discover that um, there are the kind of incredible character and originality of the artists who are born and bred here um, has come through in their work and the work of Mohammed Ahmed Ibrahim in particular, who is the one who will be uh, the star of this exhibition, um, speaks to a kind of an ability to respond to the fast changes happening in the UAE and to, to um, a kind of a sense of play and originality that we associate often with a sort of urban, um, urban centers of the art world. But in fact, he has spent his whole life in a small town in the mountains of Corfacan. And this, I think that the character of the UAE in many ways is embodied in this particular individual and his art. Um, and the many surprises that just don't fit any of the stories that we think we know about what artists are like and where they're from. And um, so I invite you all to please join me in seeing that exhibition. We really look forward to that. We really look forward to taking up that invitation and flying back to Venice when we can. Um, Bill, Bill Bragan, you came to MYUAD in 2014 with enormous experience as a programmer and producer at some of the most innovative live arts venues in New York City, and in fact, the world. How has the MYUAD Arts Center allowed you to innovate in different ways? And as you reflect on that experience of the past six great seasons, we're just entering our seventh now, how do you see the center's role in the arts ecosystem of the UAE? Well, thank you so much for that question, Marriott. And I will echo everybody else's echoes about how gratifying it is to be in this community of panelists right now. And I think it speaks to the ecosystem that uh, that the UAE has really uh, has really created over the over the past years. And that's really what attracted me was uh, hearing when I first heard about the plans for Sadia and about the plans for the nation to build New York University's campus on Sadia to bring the Louvre Abu Dhabi and the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi and the Sheikh Zayed National Museum and to really create uh, a focus on arts and culture and education as part of building to the future and a desire to be a part of that. And I think in the conversation that we've had so far uh, and the word that keeps, uh, keeps coming back as a refrain, the ecosystem, uh, it's really exciting to be a part of that ecosystem as it's growing and adapting. I still remember how I felt when I walked into the Louvre when they first opened and walked around the corner and saw certain artworks. For me, it was Duchamp's bottle rack. Uh, and I was almost weeping to realize that this, this masterpiece that has had so much influence on the way I think about art is just up the road. And then to, when I see Her Excellency coming to our programs, or Manuel and his team, coming to our programs, and of course, Marriott, you and Maya. What I realized is there is a, uh, a cohesion in the arts community here that shares this mission of building and evolving and recognizing what already exists. So for me, working in performance, I'm very well aware that the history that I'm building on is a history of the Abu Dhabi Festival and Abu Dhabi Classics and the performance series at Abu Dhabi Art. And that combination is exciting. Um, but also realizing that it's quite new, that for many of our audience members, uh, 
I'm coming from New York, which you think of as, as incredibly diverse. The UAE is diverse in a completely other way. And there are so many times I'm in the audience and I overhear someone saying, I've never been to a contemporary dance performance before, or this is the first time I'm seeing a theater play. And the idea that you can introduce performing arts, and you don't have to start in any one order that we've decided that the Arts Center is really focusing on contemporary work, and especially on hybrid work that's not easily characterized, and that light bulbs go off, and that the audiences in the UAE are incredibly curious, they're incredibly open, they're willing to engage. Uh, I think Manuel spoke about earlier, uh, they're willing to take a chance, and the invitation to dialogue is really important, that the innovation, I don't expect everybody to like everything that we present, but the audiences here are really willing to kind of take on new experiences and synthesize. And what I've been seeing in terms of the innovation is after five years, especially doing more importing and really building relationships with locally based artists through platforms like Rooftop Rhythms, for example, and Hakaya, our national day event, uh, the artists who have been in our audiences, the artists who have been in our workshops, the artists who are in our new artist development platform, Namu, are now the artists that we're commissioning to create new work that will then represent the UAE and the unique conversations that are happening here and bring those out to the world, both as a way to bring those narratives to the world, but also to support the, uh, the cultural economy and to help artists who are based here to build sustainable international careers. And so a lot of the innovation is about that exchange and it's about looking at what are the conversations that are happening within the artwork that are meaningful with what's being taught in the classrooms on campus that are relevant to the research that the faculty members are doing or that are relevant in the conversations that are, people are having in coffee shops about the issues that are out there in the world and the way that art helps them to process all of those different thoughts. Bill, uh, you spoke so beautifully about the openness of the community that you found uh, to the kind of offer that you bring. And your openness there uh, is also so significant. And I think perhaps no one uh, embodies that openness in all directions more then the utter genius that brought, brings us rooftop rhythms, Dorian Paul Rogers. Please just tell us in 30 seconds, where did you find, find Dorian Paul Rogers, who I think of as perhaps the most authentic genius in the UAE? Well, Dorian will be very happy to watch this video. Uh, and he's brilliant. And what Dorian has done for this country has been brilliant. So I give full credit to Suparna Mathur from the, uh, from the Office of Community Life, who when I first moved, moved here, she said, there are a few people you need to meet within the community who are doing really exceptional work. And he had created this platform, an open mic platform that is based on the poetry slams that happened that started in the US but have really taken over the entire world and created it as a platform to invite artists onto the stage. Sometimes artists who have been writing in their bedrooms and have never shared the work publicly, and sometimes artists who are quite accomplished. And what you see within that is that informal mentorship that happens when artists are together and the way that artists learn to find their voice. And they learn to find their voice in public by sharing their work with others and seeing what works and what doesn't work. And Dorian is incredibly devoted to building community, which has been, I think, a hallmark of all of the places that I've worked. That question of how does the art how do the arts create a shared history and a shared community from people who come from very different perspectives? And I think that's, that's really where Dorian's genius lies. Yes, and there is the real educator there too, in the sense that his day job is being a teacher, a teacher, which is remarkable. You've all spoken so wonderfully about the evolving and growing role of the arts and the creative industries in the UAE during NYUAD's first decade. And all of that still stands, all of that still obtains. But of course, none of us could ever have anticipated the profound suspension of life as we knew it, and certainly um, of the arts uh, in March, 2020. And it is of course well known that around the world, the visual and performing arts venues suffered enormously. 
uh, perhaps disproportionately among sectors in terms of their losses of audience, the people they need to make art for and with. And of course, also thereby losses of financial resources and perhaps sometimes of creative energy. But some of our institutions, many institutions actually, also pivoted very successfully, including those that you represent here. As never before, you could say, our art institutions here in the UAE, our policymakers, our curators, our artists had to perform the art of change. How do you think we did? Let's just have a conversation about this. And if I may start with Her Excellency, please, Nora, what do you think? Well, um, I think it's always tricky being the first to answer. <laughs> uh, well, I think um, we are living in a time where, you know, maybe 10 years ago, we were saying, okay, the world is getting more connected. The future generation is more connected than ever. Um, the way they tackle their problems, the challenges, the way they are open to um, certain ideas and different cultures. Um, and sometimes in the beginning, it was kind of tricky of what's happening. is too much happening at the same time. But we reached a point where we're embracing such change. Um, and we're adapting such change. And as humans, in, in, in terms of the midst of a pandemic, we've been also adapting. Um, and what's beautiful is, you, you, you know, you always grow up and you always say when, when someone grow, grows up with a strong base, with a, with a loving and caring family or friends or, I don't know, or community, um, things nourish differently. And what's beautiful is how we are adapting or embracing um, a social code in the UAE um, that, is, um, that is loving change um, in a way that will make us better, will make us ahead of the game, will make us, um, you know, um, you know, with, with, you know, the, the, the more we're experiencing the, the great kind of achievements and there are always challenges is the solidarity that we, we experienced uh, the past two years uh, and it's continuing. And it's continuing in a way where finally we're saying, wonderful, we have uh, talents and friends who uh, call the UAE home and not just for a transactional matter and not just for a job but as a home and as a as a you know as an as a as a individual who's part of this ecosystem so i think this is all part of what we do in the arts and culture and the creative community uh, and i think seeing how individuals um, stood by one another when things were difficult to keep things afloat um, and um, and yeah, and, and I think with, with such, um, you know, um, Bill mentioned something that is beautiful. I wrote it down uh, of us sharing a vision of building all of us here, Whom, whomever. I mean, and I think that is a force of change to better. And I think sharing that vision is, um, is, is something that helps us to, to, to contribute to a better change and to inspire to a better change. That's so beautifully said, and I, Bill, I would like to double click a little bit on the role of the art center during COVID-19. Uh, I certainly have a memory of sitting in uh, my boardroom with you and a few other leaders from your center, and you were telling me that an artist was about to get on a plane to come over here. I think it was March the 8th or so. Uh, for a great residency, because you have great artist residencies, which is so important where artists come from around the world. And I said, Bill, please, please call him and tell him that he cannot get on that plane because we could see it wouldn't happen. And it was so disappointing, but you pivoted within minutes and really helped us get through a lot. Can you talk a little bit about um, what you learned in the last 15 months not just the stuff that was hard, but what you might actually want to keep, what actually was beneficial, uh, even though you would have liked to have 
gotten there by a different route. Right. Thank you for that question, because it really touches on something that I think about and talk about almost every single day. I think uh, it's, it's easy as we've gone on to live to forget what a traumatic period that we are all living through on a global level. Uh, and I think one of the first realizations was how essential art was to people getting through the trauma and processing the trauma. And when people were, uh, were called to stay at home to find human connection at a time where people were feeling really isolated. So I think there was a way that COVID was really clarifying the importance of what we do. Uh, it also forced us to realize that our identity as a performing arts center, which we often define in terms of gathering people in a single place in time for a shared uh, in-person experience, uh, that wasn't available to us. So we had to really think about what could we do? And uh, we really, uh, we looked inward, we looked outward, we looked at the way that the uh, the floor had fallen out of the livelihoods of almost every single person who works in the arts and lives in the gig economy and how fragile the life of anyone who's working in the arts can be. And so there were a lot of conversations about uh, the ethics, the ethics of contracts, the ethics of relationships. There was a lot of talk about investing in commissioning work as a way to continue to fund artists and their creativity when the touring of their work wasn't possible. And for us, that also gave us a chance to really look at UAE-based artists that we could start commissioning and be a part of that transformation I was speaking about earlier. Uh, and we started looking at new forms and one-on-one -on -one theater that was online, a theater piece that was a telephone call between two strangers, a 3D spatialized audio piece that you experience in headphones as a way to experience a chorus when you could net when choral singing was one of the most forbidden activities. And then I think the question of the ecosystem. The other thing that happened is Maya and I and our respective teams at the Art Gallery and the Art Center uh, started convening cultural leaders from all across the UAE. And originally it was a response to immediately, what are you doing? How are you dealing with cancellations and contracts and, and public safety and all of those concerns? But we quickly realized that that national dialogue between all of the players on the cultural ecosystem is one of those things that will outlast the pandemic. The strengthening of a national perspective that's interdisciplinary, that cuts across all seven emirates, uh, is something that will help us to continue to build to the future and come up with increasingly what is the unique artistic experience that reflects our collective reality across the country. There was indeed such a very interesting paradox that the COVID uh, situation pushed our arts organizations and frankly, our whole university and university life, both in an unprecedented global direction. This time I really will use that word I never wanted to use again, unprecedented, in that of course we connected to our students and communities through the internet, through the video conferencing technologies that just totally took off in ways that, as Manuel mentioned, we could have a conference with all of a sudden a thousand people signing up in one day that who never would have come altogether in, in place. So that was very interesting. And on the other direction, as you've just said, and you and Maya really did lead a lot on this, uh, uh, Bill, uh, the local became so much more important and finding the spaces where we could work and come together and work for our very local communities because we knew them well and we needed to support them. Manuel, my sense in all this was that, maybe this is my bias as an art historian, my, my sense was that it was harder for museums to take their core offerings online than it perhaps was in the arts. Uh, maybe Bill wouldn't agree with this, but maybe I, we can talk about that for a little bit. Um, no, indeed. In, in the museum, we... we we believe in, in the materiality of, 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 of the object as one of the, especially the, let's say the historical museum. Um, but before maybe diving into this question, I would like just to completely highlight uh, and, and to, 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 to congratulate Maya and Bill, because during this period, they have done two incredible things. One is really um, 
to explore and to propose new type of content. And I think you have been, uh, both of you, very innovative and you have pushed uh, the capacity of invention beyond the, just the digital, but, but the, the, the consistency of it. And, and as, a, as a, of course, <laughs> a consumer of culture, this was really stimulating to see. And, and thank you for, for what you've done on, on, at a personal level and, on the, and for the history of, of culture. I think this, this was great. And this solidarity, this, uh, the second aspect is really, uh, um, uh, you have been instrumental in, in maintaining uh, uh, the collective uh, despite the, the distance and the separation. And, and I hope it was not... It was reactive, but now the momentum is there. So, so thank you for, 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 for these two things, because I, I think it's important to, to mention. Um, for us, as, a, as a, the first universal uh, museum of the Arab world, um, we were, uh, you know, really in our transformative years. So we were... We had gone over two million visitors since the opening. We were really going into our cruise uh, speed. So uh, being cut from our visitors was uh, really difficult. We reinventing a lot of uh, way of telling stories using the digital and, and, and being at home. I mentioned we are not alone, our symposium, but but many ways of uh, some um, crazy way of, of, of rediscovering the museum. But Today, and I think this is what we share again, uh, uh, New York University Abu Dhabi and uh, Louvre Abu Dhabi, because we are places of knowledge and places of experimentation, is to take the best of this period, which I hope uh, is now finishing, uh, uh, and uh, see how we can uh, use it to have the best of the new hybrid uh, uh, experience in the UAE, um, uh, we are uh, on, 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 a, on a territory which is which is completely open to change and completely, uh, um, let's say, a, a native in terms of digital and new experimentation and open-minded. This gives us uh, a blank state, to, a blank place to really reinvent cultural practices. And I'm I'm, I'm talking about uh, 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 yeah new experimentation and, and using the best of the of the of the old world, but but uh, with uh, with uh, new eyes on, on new art. And this we can do together. So uh, uh, that's for me the, the link between the crisis and what we can do together after. Thank you very much for those reflections, uh, Manuel. And I think, Maya, I want to ask you something similar. Were there things uh, at the MYU Abu Dhabi Art Gallery that you found yourself uh, able to do, maybe deferred projects, things that you always had hoped to do, that somehow the pandemic made it possible for you to try and that you want to keep doing? Yes, I think the, the this question is a hard one because... Um, when you think about what it means to succeed in the context of such a curveball as we all had to handle with the pandemic, you know, in many ways, um, keeping our spirits intact was the first definition of success, right? And so to do that, we all sort of had to ask this question, um, which is one of my favorite questions because you cannot answer it, uh, which is what is art for? And, you know, we think of it as something that has to be in person and tangible, um, but what does it really do for us as, as a species? Um, and, and I was reminded um, by one of the artist colleagues of mine when they sent me a video that they made of the work in their studio in progress as a kind of meditation on the lockdown. And I realized in the course of watching this piece of video art on my phone that I was having an art experience. This was not just a video, this was a piece of art and I was actually having an art experience. And I suddenly felt hope again because I realized that, you know, the art, art comes in all forms. And what matters is that moment where you feel yourself connecting to your humanity through art. Um, and that moment transformed my experience of um, the limitations of the pandemic. And I was reminded, I came up as a curator of video and technology-based art. And this, if any, was going to be the moment, this was going to be it, when I could see how we could push the limits of um, curating outside the gallery. Because when you curate technology in a physical gallery, it's nothing but limitations. But when you decide that your platform in your gallery is the, 
the phone, then suddenly the questions change and it becomes this incredibly exciting curatorial challenge. Um, and so two things happened in that moment, which is that um, I reconnected with why I do what I do, um, which is for this sort of living, breathing moment of humanity that art makes possible, um, and the passion of the learning and the experimentation of the curatorial process, um, and the collaboration that I then developed with a faculty member to, to build this show, and sort of seeing the life that that breathed into um, the people that I work with, and also into the artists that we then commissioned specifically for this size of frame, um, actually kind of reinvigorated and forced me to rethink uh, what I do, um, which will feed into the future as we come back to exhibitions in, in person. So I'm not going to say that it was easy. It was unbelievably difficult. But um, but the I'm really grateful that I sort of had that moment where I was forced to confront this journey. Yeah. I think you speak to something, Maya, that many of us experienced, which is the truth of a statement that's always attributed to Gerhard Richter, the great yeah. German painter, art is the highest form of hope. And I think we saw it and felt it in so many different ways uh, because art also allows us to dream a different kind of reality in different ways, whatever that means. And so in closing this wonderful panel, I'd like to ask each of you briefly to tell us one dream that you have for the next 10 years of the arts of, of the art of change and NYUAD. Uh, maybe your excellency, may I one more time put you on the spot and have you start with your dream and it can be a broad one. Well, um, my dream is um, to really have an impact and touch uh, lives in a way um, that uh, transcends beyond just the borders of the UAE. Um, I don't know how it will happen in terms of a, from a, if it's a study or a play or an artistic contribution or being in the country, how we have a strong impact that really touches lives and, and just um, have this effect to, um, to inspire more to come. Manuel, what's your dream? If you allow me, I will, I will answer by saying, you know, these kind of dreams that you have when you are waking up and you're already into the action. And I am my dream for, for NYUAD is that you can, uh, during the 10 next years, keep on, um, uh, uh, fertilizing, stimulate, um, uh, stimulating the environment. Maya working on, on, on the pavilion next year, you helping the, uh, gold, the golden lion of this year, the, 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 um, everything which is d done for the ecosystem and for the, for the people. And, um, this is the, um, fertilization that is happening. And I think because you are a university, it's also, and because I'm from the Department of Cultural and Tourism of Abu Dhabi, it is also with all the museums coming. I hope that your alumni and, and people who are right now uh, in Sudi will uh, go there and uh, uh, give the energy to uh, all these new museums and cultural institutions that will be soon very physically close to us. That's a wonderful dream, and I hope it includes at last that MOU between us too. We will. Um, we will. Bill, please, your dream. So I, when I uh, when I first started at the art center, I described a lot of what we were doing as the planting of kudzu, and you don't know you plant it, and you have no idea exactly where it's going to grow. And I think it actually builds on uh, on both Her Excellency and Manuel's kind of dream. Uh, we've been planting all of these seeds for the first seven years, and now we are seeing students who graduated from NYUED who studied in the classes here. They sat in the audience for our performances. 
they took workshops, they worked, they were at all the other cultural events, and they're starting theater companies, and they're curating art exhibitions at Al Sarkal Avenue in Dubai. You're already seeing that happen. You're seeing locally based artists creating their own new work. So now I'm my dream is that a million flowers bloom and that it reflects all of these influences and all of these seeds that have been planted in so many different ways and really flourishes. In, uh, in a garden that is uniquely uh, reflective of the UAE and all of our specific dynamics. Maya? Um, so many dreams. But really, I would have to pick up the one, the thread that you raised about art and hope, um, but specifically for NYU Abu Dhabi as an institution and the arts in the UAE. Um, that we continue to grow and develop um, until it becomes synonymous with a place where hope and experimentation and flourishing uh, can be found. Here we grow and the arts are central to that huge ambition for Emwe Abu Dhabi and to our mission, which is to grow talent, to grow knowledge to grow a better world. This has been a fantastic conversation about Emwe Abu Dhabi and the art of change with my dream team of four fantastic partners and leaders for the arts in Abu Dhabi, in the UAE, at MOED, and most importantly, as Her Excellency has said, beyond the UAE for the world. Thank you so much, uh, Your Excellency Nur al Kabi. Thank you, Manuel Rabate. Thank you, Bill Bregan. Thank you, Maya Allison. And thank you, all of you who were here with us to witness this wonderful conversation.